It'd be an understatement to say that Final Fantasy VII Remake was a game a lot of people were waiting for. Since it was announced in 2015, little bits of information were trickled out until around last year where we started getting trailers that made it look incredible. And after such a long wait, to be able to play the game is exciting in itself, but even more so since after having played it, I think it lives up to the hype. It takes the criticisms of more recent Final Fantasy games like Final Fantasy XIII and XV and uses them to make 7 Remake's gameplay a satisfying experience with a lot of variation, and partnered with a story that shows off all the best aspects of its iconic cast and a stunning visual, everything comes together to create an enjoyable modern JRPG experience. It's nothing short of a must-play when it comes to JRPGs from this year and ones on PS4, so after all that time waiting, I'm glad to say that the magical journey of Final Fantasy VII Remake was well worth the wait. Final Fantasy VII Remake's story is based in Midgar, one of the central locations of Final Fantasy VII, and is where we meet Cloud, a mercenary and ex-soldier. His first job in Remake is one with the eco-terrorist group Avalanche, whose goal is to take down the massive electrical company Shinra, who according to party member Barrett are sucking the world dry of Mako, the lifeblood of the planet. So this mission does a good job at giving us an introduction to the world and some of its characters, including Cloud, and gets the story going. Cloud is the central character of the game, but other well-known characters from Seven, including the loudmouth Barrett, the cool-fighted Tifa, and the stunning and quirky Aerith, create a well-rounded party both in abilities and personalities, with softer characters like Aerith balancing out Cloud's often harsher demeanor. Cloud is one of the tougher characters personality-wise, but I actually ended up really liking him by the end of it, and pretty much all of the main characters in the game. Cloud's dryness can manage to be humorous at times, and the group have a lot of good banter that creates a feeling of camaraderie, and the little moments between big ones did a good job of keeping you always in the loop of what everyone was thinking and made all of the moments that should be hard hitting just that, especially the ones involving death or near death. I was happy the experience made me like everyone because, as I mentioned before, this was my first experience with the core Final Fantasy VII story. I've played a little of Crisis Core and have watched Avon Children, but I haven't experienced those for a really long time, so I can't comment on if anything has been changed compared to the original story. But as the essentially a newcomer that prefers modern visuals, this remake was a great way to introduce me to its story and world, and I enjoyed it enough to even feel like trying the classic 7 game much more now just to spend more time with these characters. Each chapter of the story had me wanting to see the next with the way things were introduced so seamlessly, and the looming presence of Sephiroth added that constant tension and reason to be curious that was a great way to hype up what was to come. So as a newcomer, I'm glad I walked away feeling like I understand 7 much better as a game and that everything flowed together in an enjoyable way. And I have a feeling those who have experienced the original will find things to enjoy in this version too, as it's a beautiful new way to witness a classic JRPG story. As I mentioned in my first impressions video of Final Fantasy VII Remake's demo, I like how this game combines the stagger mechanic from Final Fantasy XIII and the quick action from XV to create a satisfying action system. And throughout the game, it remained enjoyable, with things like using the right materia and timing actions well for maximum stagger, adding a good amount of strategy. I was also pleased to see the difficulty remain a good level of challenging throughout too, and while I did end up switching to easy partway through after repeatedly getting destroyed by one of the bosses, I would still say normal has the most balanced difficulty out of what's available, as it has a nice and achievable level of challenge. But easy is there if you want to experience the story quickly, just expect the difference in challenge level to be noticeable. What impressed me even more in my full playthrough, though, was the amount of variety put into exploration to keep things interesting. While journeying to different towns and types of areas, there are a lot of things put in to keep things varied, whether it be mini games, tasks, puzzles, jumps, or even different exploration methods. And I love how I never got the feeling I was just running and running, especially in a game that doesn't use fast travel much at all. There was always something in there to keep things new and fresh, and the only thing that felt too similar were the Mako reactors, especially in their top floors, but considering their factories, it is kind of to be expected, and the bottom floors made up for that with their own special mechanics and minigame elements anyway. Speaking of minigames, 7 Remake is also very ambitious when it comes to the amount of minigames it has. There's a variety of gameplay challenges to find in quests, or even sitting on the map waiting for you to find, like the darts 
born in Seventh Heaven. And I really appreciated finding little surprises like these as they remind me a lot of the fun and silly side of Final Fantasy that I didn't realize I missed. And from this game that comes off as more serious in its trailers, it was nice to see those still there and present in this remake, and I can't wait to see what kind of mini games will be in the next one. As some final notes about the gameplay, I did also really like the addition of things like its weapon skill tree that was more traditional but had a very modern look, and also the surprising amount of quests available in each chapter that has given me a lot to do when I come back to it on top of mastering all the mini games. And it's all these things together that make it feel like there's never a dull moment and that a lot of love and care has been put in to keep this experience interesting from start to finish. Another thing that makes it easy to keep playing Final Fantasy VII Remake is how freaking beautiful it is. Trailers alone will show you a lot of the beauty you can expect to find in this game, but the beautiful scenes just keep on coming as you're playing, and bar a few textures loading in a little slow and crispy looking hair textures on my standard PS4, it looks stunning most of the time, and a lot of its cutscenes will have you feeling like you're playing through a movie, except then you remember it's a game when you see things like the sword you equip to Cloud on his back with the material you put in. In it. And touches like that make playing through 7 Remake feel really cool, and I'm sure it's even more perfect on a PS4 Pro. Additionally, the music for this game is so, so well done too. It uses musical motifs so subtly in scenes like the ones with Sephiroth or with the theme song that makes when their moments actually happen and they're played in full feel really special. The battle music in this game also might be my new favorite Final Fantasy battle theme, and I love how the game as a whole also used stereo sound too, so altogether, the music and visuals of Final Fantasy VII Remake are absolutely brilliant, and since I'm sure the next part of this remake will share the same style and quality in these aspects, I'm excited to spend more time with these elements in the next one too, as they're gorgeous. In terms of replayability, 7 Remake is nice enough to tell you early on that chapter selection will become available once you complete the game, and there's a reason for this as there are a few quests you can go back and do that make certain cutscenes even more meaningful, as being able to recognize certain citizens from quests and scenes made me curious about their lives. That's not the only reason to play more with it though, as there are a few dialogue choices or ways of playing in the world that can affect certain things, like what costumes characters wear at a certain time or the mini games you see. The world definitely has has more than treasure hidden in it, and I'm a little curious to see what else I can find if I continue playing through it. And that aside, I'm already enjoying the extra challenge I'm getting from hard mode anyway. The amount of things available to be found at the end of the experience and how they can give new meaning to it is one of the many things I think shows the amount of thought that went into this remake. We might have been waiting a long time for it, but it's clear from the details they wanted to make a playthrough in this as enjoyable and interesting as possible, with little things like a training center being available on the map before a big surge of battles or a small square button on the screen in a cutscene that will let you go to the menu before battles to fix your equipment, showing that they wanted things to be as smooth as possible. And things like NPCs actually making areas feel like communities is an impressive feat in this 25 hour long game. My playthrough might have been on the shorter side, but I know there are lots of little things and secrets to find if I keep going, and I think it's a great step in the right direction for modern Final Fantasy games moving forward that I hope we see more of soon. And even if we have to wait again, I'm sure it will be worth it. I had a feeling Final Fantasy VII Remake would be good, but the love and care put into every bit of it made it such a wonderful experience. The way it introduced everything from its characters to its world in a meaningful way made it easy to get sucked into its world and race through its many chapters, and the stunning world and little details made staying and playing it feel really fulfilling. I love that they've clearly taken criticisms from other Final Fantasies too, as it never felt too linear, there was always something extra to do, and battles felt exciting, and all the different ways you can play in it kept things constantly interesting. There's plenty more I'm looking forward to finding in it someday as well. As a standalone experience, it was a great way to get to know these characters properly in both fun and serious ways, and it's the 25 hour long push that has me actively wanting to try the original. So until I can play that or the next part of this remake, I absolutely recommend this one to other JRPG fans, fans of Final Fantasy, and those looking for a story to get sucked into. And I hope we can expect more games like this great one in future Final Fantasies 2.
Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried Final Fantasy VII Remake, what you thought of it, and if you're looking forward to the next one. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you! Bye!